they think we country niggas, we ain't got shit to bring the mainstream, no. But we got the struggling in our shit. This is our culture, hip hop, rap. We made this is the only way we gonna make it out the ghetto. I'm a rapper. I do that for a lot. I fill out the W2 and tell them bitches I rap. You do what you do. I do what I do, man. If you don't like it, get the fuck off around me. You locked us out. We said, okay, cool. We'll start our own party. If you don't like South music, suck my dick. <laughs> started, you know, with Rapper's Delight, you know, everybody like, you know, I was about fifth grade, and it was, it was on. When you talk about hip-hop, is hip-hop is the one form of black popular music that wasn't, ha that doesn't have its origins in the South, but its deeper roots are in the South. With Sugar Hill, that was the influence that started it all, you know what I mean? I mean, it didn't start it all directly in New York, but it started it all for everybody outside New York. You know, and it was fresh because hip-hop had started breaking through from New York, so it was spreading out, so everybody was kind of doing what they saw the originators doing. We embraced it because it was our cousins, our northern cousins. It was like uh, you had a whole bunch of different people that was busting freestyles, it was break dancing. And when Run DMC came, that just flipped the whole thing. Right right Hip-hop for me then just went to a whole nother level. Like, I skipped school when Raising Hell was coming out. Straight up. Like, I'm about to get my lunch money. I took that and ran straight to the store and bought the album. Me and my boy listened to the album all day. When I started really paying attention and liking one I want to rap behind, I was watching the East Coast rapping and stuff, but what I heard when the West Coast started coming with, that was like, yeah, that we talking about. We, we talking about some gangster shit, cause we were down there doing this gangster shit. The West Coast was on the same vibe pretty much that this down south was to me for as gangster. Every little area, like after the hip hop blew up, every little area started to develop their own little sound and their own little scene. We didn't talk like those dudes. We didn't look like them, you know, so we started doing our own thing, man. The rap in New York was really cultural. In other words, you had to be in New York to really get it. You could, you could, you could access the music as, okay, it's a tight beat and I like it and everything, but you really wasn't gonna get it until you actually lived in New York for a minute. That what was so hard about the South trying to get played in New York, man. People got different cultures, man. So you can't just hope everybody accept your way of living and your culture and you don't accept theirs. But New York was getting played in Atlanta, but we couldn't get played in New York. A lot of, a lot of those folks didn't really get the credit that they kind of, that they definitely, not even counted, that they definitely deserved. I was backstage 1993 at Freaknik. <laughs> I was rapping with the Wu-Tang Clan, Souls of Mischief, Tribe Called Quest. Uh, it was so many people back there. You know, we all going around in the cypher, and I remember I ripped it. And like everybody that was around all us, they was like, oh, man, who is this nigga right here? You know, and I'm like, Pimp, you know, I, you know they're like, you got to be from New York. And I'm like, no, nah. okay, you from L.A.? I know. Okay, from Chicago. I mean, everybody was standing around. Okay, you know, you 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 you, you, you gotta be, bro, bro. You know, where you from? Then I told him I was from Mississippi. Everybody loved. We was that first wave that really made motherfuckers have to take no dust when Drake got out there. That source of water. You know, everybody was boo, boo, boo. I remember it was just the outcasts and the four good and all. Remember. And I mean, we was like, man, we up here six deep, six, seven deep, and I'm talking about everybody up here, 50, 100 deep, and this tension between the West and the East, and we sitting there in the middle like, don't nobody even give a fuck about us, folks. 
We in Seoul, a platinum record. Don't nobody give a fuck about us or what the fuck we talking about. I saw them two Southern brothers up there, and I was like, I know exactly how y'all feel, because I feel the same way sometimes. Back in the days when I was trying to pitch Southern records, they don't understand, and they, it's not that they hate you. It's what, and I told Andre, I said, not that they hate you, it's that they saw the future. And it really, you know, it made us lead that event that night. Like, we're going to show all these motherfuckers. So they, one day, they're going to have to fuck with us. Now everybody finna start visiting to the South and see what really, man, this that shit, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, this kind of music originated from the South, you know what I'm saying? Like the hymns and the spirituals and stuff, you know what I'm saying? The niggas in the North, they, they in the North because they came from the South, running from the bullshit that we were going through down here, you know what I'm saying? You know, you laughed at us first because we didn't have it, now you want what we got. Now everybody want to ride doves, everybody want to grit wood, you feel me? Everybody want to put the... In that music now. No, don't fuck with us now, pimp. Now everybody wanna bounce. No, nigga, don't bounce now. You hear everybody Jump. talking about you know, riding on blades, hey, sipping boy. purple <laughs> stuff. A lot of people just say that shit so they can sell records where we do. You know what I mean? We don't really think too hard about, at least when we first start now, you ain't thinking about the commercials, the radio action. They just making the music from their house and what they feel. There's no certain style that they have down here. Everybody for each his own. What they like, they like. It's all about people being different, man. You know, we got that Al Green in us. We got that, that the Temptations, that, all of that shit. Most Southern acts don't use a lot of sound. They're making their own music. You know, a lot of live instruments, a lot of bass, a lot of guitar, a lot of soul. I got so much soul in me, it's, it's busting out. We're been the love. Smoking that weed, feeling fine. Got me a 40 and a fat ass dime. And all that. South is really family oriented, really religious based. Uh, Mississippi in particular, we got strong, strong roots in the blues and in gospel. The music dog right now, I believe, is, is our ministry. And today. I was raised up in the church, you know what I'm saying? So for, that just seemed natural to me to be in that. And if you same nigga listen to gangster music, you same nigga gonna make sure every morning, every Sunday, he gonna go to church, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter what you do, where you work, where you sleep, where you live, if you ain't got the Lord in your life, it ain't gonna work, man. And to be ghetto fabulous, you got to be highly religious, man. You here for, you know, a certain amount of time, it's bound to, you gonna get caught up, man. You gonna start slurring your words a little bit, and you gonna throw some country slang up in there somewhere. We from the South, we got an accent too, it's just country dirty. <laughs> you would hear damn near anything down here, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you got cats down here that say certain shit you would not understand, period, point blank. Ooh, man, that's right there, dope to, man, what was that man thinking, so, you know. We cut words off, we, 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 we lazy with our tongue, we really don't give a damn about if you, if you don't. Addiction. I like the way my back motherfucking just sink off in that love. I like, woo, you know what I'm saying? Ludacris is one of the most clear southern rappers I've ever heard. You know what I mean? Being clear and vocal and everything you can hear, you can understand and, 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 and know what he's talking about. But most southern rappers, man, it's, it's like, man, we can't get away from how we speak. So, you know, it's, you're going to have to rewind it a few times. Well, I'll say I'm in the battle. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can just say west. You know what I'm saying? North. You know what I'm saying? East, where I know South Memphis, put it down, baby, you know what I'm saying? Man, some of the stuff they say down here is like, already, woody, baby, it's all gravy, all that. Talking about the rat killing, you know what I'm talking about, going about your rat fixing. And let's say Jew for a Jew, as a matter of fact. What's up, Jew? Jew is like saying nigga, you know what I'm saying? It's like, instead of saying, what's up, nigga? What's up, nigga? What's up? You know, it's like, what's up, Jew? You know what I'm saying? I mean, we haven't experienced, you know, any, any negative, you know, reaction from that yet. But I'm sure if we was to go on a major, do a major deal, we couldn't use that in our rap. They don't think Southern cats are lyrical. It's not that. It's just that you don't understand what we say. When we say Jew, oh, your mind go off into a whole nother realm. Oh, he's anti-Semitic. You know, we got different accents, you know, but we still Southerners. Our culture is still primarily what binds us. Media is controlled out of two places. One, New York, 
and second Los Angeles. But at some point, man, the people who control hip-hop magazines either willfully committed or unwillfully omitted to tell our story. You know what I'm saying? And at the end of the day, they're going to have to live with that. The South has influenced every form of music, popular music you can think of. So it's only natural when you give us this hip-hop, we're going to look at it and say, oh, yeah, we sell it. Let me, let me show you where we can take this. Bass, 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 bass. Ooh, Florida, that's a whole different world. When you really think about Florida, you, you naturally think about Miami bass. Up-tempo, bass-heavy, rhythm-driven, not too much lyrically or vocally. There's a lot of party change. You take, you sample um, Africa, Van Daughter, Planet Rock, or a, a Clear, or something like that, then put that bass over there and that kick and ride. I mean, that's what bass music was like, like to me. That was my street music. They look not just booty music, it's party music. You know what I'm saying? We like to go in the club, we like to have a good time. It's constantly women, it's constantly clubbing, it's constantly, you know, just that's what keeps the vibe going. Who inspired me? Uh, Luke, you know, Luke, you know. Luke, hey, we want some pussy. Luke, them brought out the bass game, you know. The deep bass, you know, ghetto style. He's from Florida, and he was the only one that was really like putting it down. A lot of people weren't understanding him, cause they were like, "Oh, that booty music." That's what they they classify Florida as. Oh, Luke made everybody dance. He had everybody on the floor. Even the hardest, the hardest nigga was loving Luke. You know what I'm saying? Cause they get the girls on the floor, and you know that's what they love, and they just start shaking. So, you know, it's gonna be a nigga behind them. So. You know what I'm saying? They loving Luke. Wow, man, what the hell is Luke? What the hell is this? You know, he brought the freak to the industry. Hoes, that's what you remember. You remember hoes, fucking hoes. <laughs> Without Luke, I don't even know if we'd have had too many thongs on videos these days. The man went to jail about, what, 100 times? Just so he can, you know what I'm saying, practice his freedom of speech. We have the right to choose what we want. I mean, either we buy it or we don't. For us, the people who find our music obscene, you don't have to buy it. You know, you can walk right by the record bin and don't even worry about it. You know, what's good in my house may not be good in your house. And you know, that's our point. Other rappers in different parts of the country, at the time they were dissing what Luke was saying, but really all he was saying, I'm getting on the record, and it's party records, so we talking about partying. Um, but Two Loud Crew was putting it down with Luke. Uh, they broke down barriers, man. They made people have to respect the Miami music. We just was able to take it from booty shaking to gangster with Trick and let Trick be able to do what he got to do. But if you remember when Trick first came in the game, he came in the game on the Scott song with Loop to let everybody know, and he just let everybody know, yeah, I can do it like that. Trick is very talented. Um, I love his lyrics. I love the way he writes. Trina, she's hardcore, you know what I'm saying? She's. <laughs> she's <laughs> freaky with her shit. She hardcore with her shit. She's just nasty. I dig her to the fullest. It's my role model right there. Father shit like a big old dick. So they can't do me freaky down there. You know what I'm saying? Stay the father shit like a big old ass dick. So I guess that's where they got this freaky shit from. From Luke, with, he looked at State of Florida and say, oh, we finna freak down here. Magic Mike. Bass. I like the scratch fast. I'm with it. I'm with it. That was like my thing, but scratching fast over hip hop beats still made me sound slow. So my thing was I wanted to cut over fast beats, and that's where it came from. Mike has never been a rapper. His thing was the bass tones, the bass, the fluctuations. Yeah, he had rappers and stuff on, on things, but Mike sold tons of records, man, just because of his bass. Everybody wanted those, the, the bass in the cars. One day a car rolled by, and they had dropped the bass slow way down. I mean, talking about, it, was so, it was so slow that I could not hardly understand it. And so it made me mad. I'm like, why are they taking my song and doing that? So then I did feel the bass, which was a slow song. But if you slowed it down, the bass would disappear. And it would tear your speakers up because it would drop the bass down so low 
that you couldn't hear it, but it'll make your speaker sit there and just flutter. You know, it will tear your coil up. So I said, okay. So I said, I got something for them if they slow this down. Every record he put out practically went platinum with no radio play. Mike has five gold records and one platinum record, but all of that, all those sales, strictly from his own independent label. When you think of Florida and you think of uh, DJs, uh, the main group of DJs that comes to mind is the group called uh, Jam Pony Express. These guys would ex would take records, popular records, and they talk over them. Bass check. check. One, One two. 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 Coming, Coming through, through. with the old, the old school. school. Bass. 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 Jam, jam on express DJs. Place, place, place. You know, them niggas to jam on them tapes. You know, that's kind of the way I flow. You know, I flow like them niggas. Meantime. And it's that underground radio that created the, the, the outlet for these underground artists to blow up. You know, a lot of music is broke, right, at the underground station. The, the mainstream get paid so many money, so many dollars from the record companies. So, they feel like we cutting in. We, 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 we back that little Joe, you know what I'm saying? We back that little Joe in them. The people off in the communities, man, they ain't listening to commercial station. You know, not, not the folks off in the hood. They listening to the pirates, because the pirates play exactly what they want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Holler at your country cousin, and whatever you want to hear, I will put it on right now. Right now. Right now. Really, you can have the hottest album in the world, but I, I let my audience, I let my listeners decide the faith. If I'm a rap artist, I can't, I can't come up to um, any major radio station and say, hey, play my record. It's not going to happen. I don't have the money. I don't have the clout. And um, I didn't invest millions of dollars to have the video played so that BET can play it, so that, uh, you know, Cumulus can play it on 200 of their stations, as well as Clear Channel on their stations. It's a, it's a big corporate structure. It's not what the people want. It's who behind the doors at the round tables, who decide what's going to play and who's going to play what, you know, because if it was what the people wanted, it would be a lot more videos out. It would be a lot more videos on, a lot of people could be selling more records and making more money. If you went for underground, half of the bitches that, that got hot shit, you would have never heard, you know what I mean? Hey, y'all y'all gotta appreciate underground stations too, man, because it, it's hard, man. It's hard, you gotta see how a dog is here working. I, I know how it is, I'm getting me on underground stage. I can see what I'm going to say. We're forced into the grind. So since we're forced into the grind, that just makes our hustle that much stronger. Y'all know, man, we like the Ben Cona slow. Look fresh and clean, went with, walk through the door. I mean, more, but don't hate, keep your mouth shut for sure. We real folk, don't play games, and that you must know. I'm country living, on the porch, just sipping, tripping. Car games ain't money flipping. Sit back with the AC kicking. Always skipping on some women, but it's hard because y'all boys for the dissing. But it's hard because y'all boys for the tricking. Insecure because I'm talking to your girl. Homeboy, I get the trick, take your trick, flip your trick, and then trick your trick. So long as you can lick the click. Collar green when I come and it catch the fits. Man, them boys on buzz, but it keeps it lit. When I chop flip flops, all types of shit. Man, what you know about liver putting the grits? Real quick, get hit on the jacket sip. Talk slick, bust slip, cry. You know, sex is everything right now. Sex, music, and drugs. When they go in the club or when they come down here, they like it. They like when they see the girls shaking their behind and all, you know what I'm saying? You know, we're proud of dancing. People like to dance here. I mean, we really get into dancing. The ladies really get into shaking it. The fellas really get into throwing a little something. It's bodies and bodies on top of each other, you surprise somebody and get pregnant. A uh, girl that you may see in a working suit, you know, and, and a nice business suit, you may see her up in the club with a, with some, you know, a, a it skirt on. She, she, she escaping, and that's what I love. The hoes dancing with everybody, they just jumping up, they hear a good song they, that's bumping, they don't give a fuck if you're wearing goddamn gators or a goddamn white t-shirt or Air Force One, you next to them, they just gonna let it loose. That big ball, that's what I call ball, cause I love the hoes. I, yes, I do. See, it's what you get if you bring your whole ass to Jamie, you'll get some real food that'll go to them fucked up ass club where they ain't got no sandwiches. You understand me? It's real food. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Now I got
Ricardo. Like people come to the south to go to the strip club because it's like it, you can't see nothing like this nowhere else. Like you, they, these girls can make their butt jump and their stuff pulse. Like I don't know how they make I tried. I ain't gonna lie. I went home. <laughs> Basically, the strip club is how I tested my music out. I burn, I go to the studio, you know what I'm saying? We do a track, I go to the studio. I mean, I go to the, the strip clubs. If the girl's shaking to and they dig it, you know what I'm saying? I know I have a record. You see what I'm saying? If the girls, the girl's buzz don't lie, if the girl's buzz move into a record, I got a record. When the guys see the dancing and hearing the music, I don't know, it seems to stick more. I don't know. But it's in their memory. I try not to attend those. I <laughs> That's where, you know, they got, they had the place that they would go and test their music. And at the same time, it was a place that, that kind of like went along with the music, you know what I mean? Whew. Lap dancing? <laughs> a moment of silence for the strip club down south. In M-Town, you come to our strip club, I might not need to be saying this, but I just got to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get some pussy in our strip club. You're going to get some head, you're going to get some pussy for the low low. Pimpin' it is a really, it's a fly lifestyle. It's, it's something, you know, that's how I really, I, I got, that's how I created Dirty Down, the whole fly vibe. We always had the strip clubs down here. They're very lucrative, you know what I'm saying? So what I end up doing is just getting some girls who down for me and everything, want to get, get that money, you see what I'm saying? Drop off the strip club, boom, they coming out, they making five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars a night, a G a night sometimes, you know? There's it's a lot of profit involved in that, you see what I'm saying? And by the same token, they're seeing stuff. They wouldn't ordinarily have cars, apartments, condos, that type of thing, fly clothes, the Gucci Prada, you see what I'm saying? When they finish messing with me, you know what I'm saying, they have all that. They have the fly stuff that they need. Everywhere where there's artists, where there's men, you know, they want to see beautiful women, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, which guy? I mean, everywhere you go with females, there's always an opportunity, you know what I'm saying, for those females to end up being with somebody. And what better than make some money off of it, you know what I'm saying? My conversation will cover me when I'm old and ugly. Bitches still gonna be loving me, rubbing me when I ain't, waking me where I wait, taking it to the street and retrieving their daddy cake. Make no mistake about it, pimping, I'm bold and beautiful. From my hair to my cuticle, magging as usual. Do your bitch something that you wish that you could do. Hoes love me, and that feeling is mutual. I don't discriminate or investigate. You can live in the rich section or on section eight. Have a flat chest bitch or a breast that's fake. You don't gotta know shit. Put on your dress and shape. I set the dates. You just perform a service. I'm in the car waiting for you. Don't be long and nervous. I heard it's not what you put in the bitch. What you get out? I put game in her so I don't have to beat the shit out. I'm about to die. Everything else, secondary. Go get my cream. By any means necessary. And I'm checking every bitch in the place who put a dick in her face for free instead of getting that cake for me. <laughs> Damn time. One of the first kids that actually really uh, broke the scene out of Memphis on the rap scene was uh, Gangsta Pat. Pat, I'm the gangster, you know what I'm saying? Just, this name speaks for itself. One of the first cats from Memphis that really kind of blew up, you know what I'm saying, beyond Memphis. He was hard, and he talked about it, and it was real, you know. During the same time when Pat was out, we had this guy named Pretty Tony that was out. Um, he had the song I called Get Buck. The Get Buck thing was like a chant that we used to say at the clubs when we used to do the gangster walk. Man, that, that's, that is the Memphis thing. Memphis started that. A lot of people done try to pick up and snatch it and do different things and add their own twist to it. A cap a real life name of uh, Adrian Norfley. He had, uh, was one to dance for Hammer. And he took it to Hammer. You know, he originally from here and he got it from a, some guys in Memphis. So Hammer brought it out, made it more famous than anybody, but it started, originated here in Memphis. Initially, this was called the Buck Jump. This would have been occurring around 89, 90. And uh, at least in Memphis, you know, the tendency was to do this dance and people yelled the words, get buck. Get buck, get buck, get buck. And eventually, you know, Memphis came to call the dance the gangster walk. And it can get wild. When it's time to get wild, you know, you got it's something like a mosh pit. Man, everybody, man, in the club, just bucking behind each other, you know what I'm saying? Just behind each other, just bucking the club. Ain't nobody dancing. The slower the song is, 
the harder they could gangster walk to it. A half a club of people on the dance floor, throwing bowls, jumping around, swinging, singing to the music, and one form all at one time. But it basically it was a large circular kind of line dance in which the whole club basically would do this dance and rotate around the club clockwise or counterclockwise. They all gangster walk it. <laughs> oh. Of course, you always had some fool that wanted to go the opposite direction from the rest of the club, and this is how elbows were thrown and fights would break out. Niggas used to start fights off that shit because a nigga purposely go up to a nigga that ain't like him, you know what I'm saying, bomb or some shit, you know what I'm saying, before you know it, it's a fight that broke out because a nigga gangster walking, you know what I'm saying, setting up a nigga to, you know what I'm saying, they purposely know to probably, probably get about five, six niggas like, man, yeah, that boy is over there, that boy is over there. The beat come on as soon as you, it's that particular song they waiting on, as soon as they hear that mother, they just start gangster walking. Mother think you just dancing and shit, but they over there plotting. They slowly get their way over there to the dude. Before you know it, they circling the motherfucker. They, uh, uh, then, uh, And, uh, you know, I think it's that kind of atmosphere that produced the triple six hit, Tear the Club Up because these little fights would jump off when folks got to gangster walking. And it got so raucous and rambunctious that you go into Mississippi into some of these little small towns and you'll still occasionally see a club and they'll have a sign up, no gangster walking. You seen the whole crowd rocking with every artist that got up there from Squeaky to Project Players, Tom Ski, A-Ball. Anybody that got on stage, you, just, you know, they got up there and did their thing. But also the crowd gave back the love by gangster walking. That was a part of our culture, you know what I'm saying? A part of the hip hop scene here in Memphis. Man, from Tennessee. When them boys come down here, man, eight ball them JG raise hell. The pimps, man, they was the pimps, man. Ball them JG, they always represent that pimp, pimp style, you know what I'm saying? To the first artist out of Memphis from anywhere down to sell 250,000 right here. Right here, man. I'm talking before they went nationwide, before the world heard them. Right here in the M Town, dog, 250,000. It ain't an artist did it yet, dog. We was just doing our thing, and what came natural, and we wasn't looking at it like we was, you know, blazing a trail or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? Me, myself, I'm gonna keep it real, 8-Ball MJG really broke it. They the one cracked this motherfucking half, you know what I'm saying? Then you got 3-6 Mafia, you know what I'm saying? 3-6 are straight up Memphis. They're, they're straight up Memphis. We like, we like some street niggas out here with some street sounds and, you know what I'm saying? We trying to make your trunk bump. You know what I'm saying? That's our whole thing going. You know, if you ain't from here, I know you think it's country, but we keeping the gangster down here. Man, sometimes the, the doggone club be outside the club. You know what I'm saying? The parking lot is the, uh, that's the showroom. That's where everybody get their shine. You know, girls. If they got the outfits on, they flaunt them. If players got the rides, they got them out there. Me and my niggas on a mission. <laughs> yeah, man. That fucking lot like pimping big shit down here. You know, a lot of niggas don't want to go in the club and shit. Cause you know, some clubs might enforce dress code, you know, dress code, but after the club get out, whew, man. We call it the let out, the let out. I think because so much goes on inside, in the club, like I said, you know, they're taking all that to be true and you just, you know, after it's over, a lot of times the fellas want to show the girls, yeah, we wasn't just singing, we got that, you know what I'm saying? I'm sitting on the 24, I got this in my trunk. I can do this for you, da da da. So you day out in the lot, you know what I'm saying? Showing everybody what they can do and what they got. And you know what's funny? A lot of cats in the South, man, actually don't try to go out to the club until the let out jumps off because it's free. I mean, all you got to do is hang out with the boys and you get to catch all the women that are coming out of the club. I ain't going to the club. Why should I pay to get in the club when the women got to come out the club? You got a car show outside, a fashion show outside, <laughs> a beauty contest outside, you know what I'm saying? 
a drove contest outside, and you got the club on the inside. We like the cars with all the speakers, you know what I'm saying? We get an old car and put the same amount of money in it that somebody will go and buy something fresh off the lot. But it'll be an old car, but it's worth all that. A dormant is this thing where I take what I have and I make it even better by embellishing it with jewelry and chrome. Cars are the extension of ourselves in this culture. To ride, to share Niggas mostly ride the old school shit. Then you know the flip flop paint, 13 color, the rainbow, Skittle, whatever you want to call it, you know what I'm saying? Swerving on them 22 or them 23, you know what I'm saying? Or 24. Everybody got TVs in their car, in the headrest. Uh, you might got a TV in, in your uh, your gas pump thing. And when they open up, you got a TV right there or in your door or something, you know what I'm saying? It just, everybody just, we crazy, man. Different styles and stuff. Cars be iced out, bugged out, judoed out, 32'd out. It, it's totally different. We definitely ball into the highest of balls activity, you know what I mean? Oh, we like old school. We like old school. We like luxury cars, but old school niggas take pride in that shit, though. Everybody have, they have to have they, they hood cars, what I call it. They hood cars. You have your luxury car that you pull up, you bend, you, you know what I'm saying, your BMW, but then you just, you have to have that hood car to, to, to just, you know, to represent where you came from, so it's like you would never forget. The people that keeps it absolutely trill is the people that go to their uncle and get that old ass Nissan Central that been in their backyard for damn near two years and you need everything in the world done to it. But you really don't have the money to do it all so you just get it up and running. But you will find a way to put a damn system in there and that whole goddamn car sound like goddamn, <laughs> it gets, it's gonna goddamn just go and bust in the orbit or something cause it's rattling the damn license plate around. He got more music, he can't hear shit. They'll take anything and make it the world. You can see a brother out there with a uh, 87 Pinto. He had that thing looking like a Bentley. I done seen a nigga with four TVs and a motherfucking 92 Nissan Maximum on, on dubs. I ain't bullshitting right out here, right on this damn street, nigga. It might not get but a couple of feet, but that couple of feet is gonna look good than a motherfucker. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That shit to go up in the hood. And, and see a uh, $13,000 house about to fall down, you know what I'm saying? But in the driveway, nigga, you know what I'm saying? It might be $60,000 worth of merchandise parked in the driveway, you know? I seen a motherfucker with three TVs in his car and his shit was pulled over on the side because the motherfucking engine locked up. Now, he knew his shit was smoking from day one. His shit smoking from day one. Now his engine locked up. Now he got TVs up in the motherfucker and he flagging the motherfucker down. I'm thinking like, shit, what? I pulled over to the motherfucker. I'm like, shit, what we finna do? Post up outside? Bump your shit. He like, no, man, I need a jump. I'm like, man, fuck you. <laughs> Nigga, you done put $10,000 into your shit and you said, fuck the engine. I'm out. I left that nigga on the side of the highway, man. I thought we was finna flex, man. I saw one cat with it one day and I thought that was just that one cat. He had a chandelier hanging from the top of his car. And the next thing you know, I started seeing it all over the place. And they got bigger and they got brighter. You know what I'm saying? And I saw one cat that had a chandelier that looked like he had actually took it out of a ballroom, goddammit. Oh no, I wouldn't do that. That's 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 a nightmare to me. Yeah, we got some of the most creative people here, man. That you 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 never know. They come with all kinds of fantastic shit, man. You can see it every day. Oh man, the green car collection. Yeah, the legendary green car collection. The green car collection came from the house. Our house in the hood is 50 years old. You dig what I'm saying? The cars matched the house. That was some of my granddaddy shit. That was his color. So I took that color, which was a 50 year old color, and just you know started the cars. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Unusual down here. You know what I'm saying? You might see, I mean, you might see five or ten blue cars come down the street. You see what I'm saying? You might see ten red trucks come down the street. 
uh, uh, six blue trucks. All I'm spinning. You see what I'm saying? This is not no fucking game. I'm not lying to you, dog. Toys. Cars is our toys, man. Put them candies on it. Put them 22s in up. Whole lot of spokes. And we doing it. Yo, China White got these niggas bout to bite they nails. I come through, shake them down, and calibrate their scales. I'm a down south bitch, raised on butter and grits. And I'm about my hustle, trying to get all I can get. Cause I ain't trying to work for 550 and jack in a box. I was raised by a nigga that kept cracking his socks. Water and pots, I'm like, my my daddy don't cook. No eating at the table, no fairy tale books. He played football with me and taught me to box. Told me, fuck Barbie though. Nigga bought me Tupac. Nigga told me, don't ask nobody for shit. Nigga showed me how to shoot dice and put bullets in clips. Train me lead through, I keep two nines ready to bust. But on the real, you know what's hard? A nigga struggling with lust and fighting with sin. The ways of this world entice me. But fuck the world, nigga, the devil don't like me. It's my story. <laughs> ah! All right, all right, that's it. <laughs> You gotta love Texas, man, where candy Cadillacs roam on chrome and love to swing. Um, Texas is just, you know, it's like its own country. We just laid back people, really, though. We just totally laid back. We like our music laid back. You know, just like we like screw, you know, we like everything. We like our stuff a little slower than they like it, you know, on the East Coast. So if you got some music, uh, some hard drum beats going real fast, you don't understand what's happening. So DJ Screw found a way that we could understand what they were saying. So he slowed it down for us. And start making the mixtape like that. If I got drank, I'ma blow it up. Dank, I'ma blow it up. I'm on 80s and foes when I'm rolling. Mike, Mike Jones. Mike, Mike Jones. Mike, Mike Jones. Mike, Mike Jones. From the Swisher house. Yeah. DJ Screw, man. He, uh, first of all, I gotta say, I gotta say, I appreciate it, cause, uh, yeah, without that right now, you know what I'm saying, OG Ron C, I don't know what I'll be doing. I'll slow it down, man, and give it a more of a laid back feel, you know what I'm saying? Say, for instance, uh, a song is like a dance song. I would slow it down, man, so you can ride to it, you know what I'm saying? And that's basically what you're going to do, man. When you screw something, man, you, you slow it down so, you know, it'll be riding music instead of dancing music, you know what I'm saying? DS Crew just created a whole new culture, you know what I'm saying, a whole new movement. This, it just swept, you know what I'm saying, the whole South. It has, it has really snowballed, and, a, and it's a recent phenomenon, you know, and you hear different stories about the origins of it, but I think everybody agrees it starts with a man named DJ Screw. Screw changed the way we viewed mixtapes. He changed the way, not only that, he, he changed the way people do production in Texas. Every Wednesday, they would go to his house and buy tapes. And it's like, every Wednesday morning, it'd be a line from his door, down the sidewalk, down the street. I like my music slow, I'm a screwhead. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> in, in that neighborhood, at eight in the morning, if you see a line out of your house, it looks like a it looks like a dope situation. Screw was doing number seven tapes. So the cops come in one day, they want they thinking they got some big dope bus. They they see all the guys, see the cars up the street. They kick the door in. Guns everywhere. And it's tape decks. Reels. Turn tapes. That's all it is. No dope, no action. That's how big he was. <laughs> He came in, man, and, and put a whole new coat on the game, man. You know, he was, he was truly a legend, you know. Well, he wanted to know that he was the best DJ in the world. That's what he wanted to be. I got partners at the source. They could not stand screw music, but then they heard, like, oh, that's my jam, and it's screw and chop. Man, and then that just, everything just clicked in their head. Everything just clicked, and all of a sudden, now they feeling it. Screw was doing 2,000 tapes, minimum, per week at $20 a tape, that's 40 G's per week. And he was a humble fella, real cool cat, real humble humble guy. But for him to be doing those kind of units, that told me how big it was. He put his heart and soul into his music, 
because he didn't go out on the streets and play with other kids. He stayed in there with his two turntables and made his music. Man, the last flight is fucking. The last flight is fucking. Yeah. Five four. What up? Put them up there. I ain't gonna be walking around, bitch. You ain't gotta walk with it. Nah, I ain't tripping. I got about five in my pocket. I'm straight. Yeah, you straight. You straight. You straight. I'm straight, bitch. <laughs> Zipping on some scissors. Not letting you know what this is, but it's what we call superstar juice down south, you know what I'm saying? Drank Ben Hill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're old motherfuckers. That's 40 something, down there 50 years old, talking about how they was young and sipping on it. It's cough medicine. It's not NyQuil. It's nothing you can get over the counter. It's promethazine, it's codeine, what you get from the doctor's office. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's, boys go get some NyQuil and think that's, that's a drink, but it's not. You know what I'm saying? That's, you feel me? That's like taking that Tylenol thinking it's an X pill. You know what I'm saying? It's not. You know what I'm saying? But you feel me, and then what they'll do then is they'll mix it up, you know what I'm saying, mix, mix like four ounces up, or depending on how, you know what I'm saying, you yeah, whoop whoop. But, and they'll mix it up with some fruit juice or some Sprite or something, you know what I'm saying, and then, yeah, that's some drink, that's yeah. syrup, it's lean, you know what I'm saying? I think one of the biggest misconceptions that everybody listening to screw music is on syrup and uh, drugs. Everybody is, you know what I'm saying? The majority of the uh, fan base that listen to screw music are suburban kids. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those kids don't drink or smoke. I mean, purple stuff is like lean. I mean, it's something that make you chill. You know, this is a slow city. New York, they move fast. There ain't nothing wrong with moving fast. You know what I'm saying? Life is too short. We like to move slow down here. You know what I'm saying? We like to take one day at a time, you know? We plan for futures, but we take one day at a time. You know what I'm saying? And we sip lean, everything just, you cool, you chilling. You know what I'm saying? And the music is when you when you when you when you hit the dank and when you hit the weed or when you know what I'm saying you sip the drink and you listen to the screw music, it just it just ease your mind like a massage. Now hold up, you're chilling with the boss ESG. There's a freestyle that might go on your DVD. I'm cooling in the hood, sipping on drink, talking about hyper rappers from down south got bank. I'm doing it off the top of the dome. Stay riding on chrome. I know that a lot of the world wonder what's in this style phone. I won't say it, I ain't no snitch, I'm a gangster for real. Down how we spend about 20 G's on the grill. Tell me how you feel. You know I'm a gon' wreck ya. I'm sporting a leg, I should be sporting a Clyde Drexler, but that's all right. All day got a call. My nigga named Flex told me he's in town, dog said he got his camera in a old Mitsubishi. Wanted to come through the hood so he can stop and see me. So what did I do? I had to call my crooks, had to tell them how to weed, the work, and the books. Cause I'm a real gangster for real, illegal. Four, four, there's a legal, the truth, like being a seagull. This all off the dome, ain't nothing wrote or written. Nothing has ever been snake snack, no snitching, just keeping it real. Almost lost the tongue, been the freestyle king since I was fat and young, and I'm older, ain't no chips on my shoulder, made a million dollar in pie slaying boulders, but now I'm in the rap game, check the sound scan, 600,000 independent doing it man, did the song pack man, see I flipped it over, last week sold another 50,000, bought a Range Rover, and I ain't tripping if your boys got beef, I got heat, my crib about 7,000 square feet, never did an album, oops I'm lying, did about six player, a lot of cats been dying from Fat Fat to the Big Steve to the Big Pun, ain't no telling who's been gone. Better watch for the gun, but nine days the game is crazy. No bombs, I wish there wasn't no George the Bushes, no Saddams. I'm almost losing my words. You heard what I heard. It might be losing my words because I'm slipping the syrup. I mean, sipping the slurp. See, it's sipping the syrup. I'm flipping birds. No, you heard. Nigga swinging on the curb. Never been a nerd. I'm a gangster for real. Cedric Hill, that's the nigga with the million dollar deal. When it come, I'm gonna spit. Never ever fall. I'm a ball with my dog. Yeah, I mean, I stand tall when I fall off the wall. No, no, I'm just Bullshit, just acting a fool. That's just some bullshit. But it's going down out here. That's the little song we do to have fun. Look. Then, of course, you have to mention Houston. 
And see, here comes uh, the Ghetto Boys. <laughs> Goddamn Scarface and Willie D and goddamn it Bushwick Bill. Them the kings of the South. They like I run DMC down here. When we first hit the scene, the main, I guess, point that we wanted to convey to the world is that, you know, it's talent right here in the South. I, I love what niggas do to the game, man. But I, I, I really love what niggas do to the game to change it. The first Ghetto Boy show I ever did was in this motherfucking barn, dog. No shit, it was a motherfucking horse barn. They had cleaned it out, threw a motherfucking system in there with some turntables, and we went in there and rocked that motherfucker. They were definitely pioneers of the South as far as making motherfuckers just listen to what the fuck we was doing. Ghetto boys put the mark on Houston, man. Now, when things began to change was when the Ghetto Boys' second album, Grip It On That Other Level, Happen. And we owe that to one man and one man only, and that's James Prince. Jay, Dre made people respect the South. You know what I mean? You gotta respect us now. Then he scoured Houston, found a young rapper out of South Acres by the name of DJ Action. You now know him today as the immortal Scarface. And he found a brash, hardcore, in your face, Tell it like it is, straight up country and unapologetic about it. MC by the name of Willie D. I'm unbreakable. Get on born, get on bread, get on fed, get on to the motherfucking head. Bust at me, you better hope I die. You motherfuckers all know by now. I'm unmotherfucking breakable, bitch. We can bring lyricism to this. To, Scarface is a perfect example. Scarface is unequivocally one of the best lyricists in this game. That was like the Houston shit when you just, when you hear that, <laughs> excuse me, you hear that, it represents, you know, age time. What's my yeah, I got three, three people I like, though. There's Scarface and me and me. He ain't finna tell you nothing foolish, you know what I'm saying? He gonna give you the outcome of it all. It's one thing for someone to rap and paint a picture that you see. It's another one for a rapper to rap and you feel it. UGK. 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 Free Pimp C. Bitches. <laughs> UGK for sure. We represent PA. Will always be revered in the South for what they've contributed to hip hop music. Pimp C and Bun B, them the two underground supermen. Bun B from UGK got on the plane the next day and say, since Pimp C locked up, that's my family. They won't let me go. No. Bun B is one of the man. That nigga's one of the, one of the greatest to me, pimp. You know what I'm saying? Like that nigga's the truth, and a lot of motherfuckers don't even recognize that he's the truth like that because they ain't heard that much of him or whatnot. Underground kings. I didn't know being stigmatized with, with a name like that would hit me like that, man. But uh, it's earned me honor and respect, man, that I, I, I think I value more than any kind of monetary, you know what I'm saying, any kind of paper we could have made. Even though we saw a little paper, man, I, you know what I'm saying, just being down with the street and whatever, man, that, and be having that underground following, that street honor, that, that respect in the game, man, that's it's priceless. Now when my boys pull it through, Pimp and Bond, shit, they set the trend. You know, we had Scarface. He down there with rap a lot. He set a trend. You got trendsetters out the south. Open the doors. Open the doors. And I promise. come through kicking it. I promise, dog. The boys out the south, true enough, they lyrics are very dope. Niggas always talking drama like they want this peace. When I see them in the streets, all they want is peace. It's strange how a peacemaker, faker turn peacemaker, King Cooper, the copy, copy machine, because I keep paper. And it's so gangster, the way the funds stack up. The way I spend it, it get low and it always come back up. My niggas will come back up. Me, if you're dumb, act up. Rap sucks. Act up the rapping will get wrapped up. 
That tough nigga will be changing his tomb when his soul's in a hole and they throwing his chain in a tomb. Puerto Rican, yo, explain, oh, whatever you want, poppy. When one of them clean cocksy, the other one gon' watch me. Guess the funds got me, riding in the sun top be missing the guns cocky, hate it, then come stop me. Sleeping with the hammer, not sleeping on no candles, but still I managed to keep the heat in the pajamas. Police is trying to jam us, FED's trying to red hand us. Don't have us doing anything illegal on cameras, can't grab us. I shoot you, the police wouldn't ask whether I did it, cause my jersey say I'm back in the past. Ten years before Allen I, Dr. J is my alibi. Throw 50 at the judge and see how much free time that'll buy. And if that don't work, nigga, it don't matter, my niggas will show up at the judge's house and give that a try. The end. Chameleonaire is raw. Rewind through this verse and all the images you saw was gangster gutter. I'm not a gangster, but dog. I did it to prove that I can rap gangster better than y'all. Oh, uh, uh, you know about the ATL? You see how white people act when you put them in front of the camera? Watch the difference between putting the camera in white people's face and the black people's face. Atlanta's a hustler city, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, like it's a, it's a real, it's a hustler's market down here, whether it's from a, for a long time it's been that way, whether it was number running, pimping, crack, heroin, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it was, real estate, landscaping. Atlanta's a hustler, like it, it became like a hustler's market, especially when music started picking up. Mojo, Mojo was our first rapper that really got a record from the streets played on the radio station. Mojo was that era of house party, you know, music, and um, which, which evolved into like what, for the Southerners, you know what I'm saying, is um, like the, the skate rink sound. Because of what I have up up my sleeve, I'll tell you that it is a very easy. So look around, but don't you be surprised. Oh yeah, well you know, we used to go down right here, man. Um, you know, we used to do road shows, WOK road shows here in Atlanta. was the biggest outside concert in the city of Atlanta, you know, back in the early 80s. Heck, man, we used to have a stage out here. We used to throw down right here at the West End Mall. Hey, this way it was popping, man, you know. Hitman Sammy Sam is an underground lead. When you say Hitman Sammy Sam, Atlanteans know you know your Atlanta hip hop. The motherfucker who was just raw goddamn aggression, who gave you a hook and a ghetto story out this world, was Sammy Sam. I was always the underdog. Nobody didn't really like me because I was a gangster rap. He is almost like a mythical character because he stays he's in and out of jail. So he comes out of jail, he drops a record, he goes number one. Next thing you know, Sammy's back in jail, or Sammy got shot, or something's happening to Sammy. Real street legend. Like how Koozie Rap is to New York, Sammy Sam is like that down in the South. I mean, a nigga, you know, he, all the shit he rapping about is street life. He is the street life. With this the hood, man, kill. So you understand me. Southeast Atlanta, where the poorest of the poor kids live. Like, that's where Sammy Sam was from. So his shit was like, like, man, when he told the story, it was hard. Back then, if you really were beefing with somebody, it was like west side against south side, east side against the west side. It was like everybody was down for their hood. I was from zone three. See, and it was like, if you come on this side of town, you gonna get hurt. Zone 3, where Sam from, is like a police zone with more housing projects in it than any other police zone in the United States. Like, that's what it was famous for. Like, motherfucking death, murder, and violence. I've been shot now 15 times, you know what I mean? Not at one time, you know, in different cases. I gotta say, man, Sam and Sam is a hit maker. You know, he, the, the streets love him, you know. The, all the clubs love him, the DJs love him. He got a lot of love out of Atlanta. And he like the trend stuff as far as the, the real street gangster music. Like, he really put it down. And his songs are cranking nigga up to kill a nigga, for real. You know what I'm saying? And it was the lyrics. It wasn't just the beat and the hook. It was the lyrics that nigga was, was holding on to. You know what I'm saying? Like, pff, Red Dog roll in, but they couldn't win. Somebody yelled 99, it had to be Susie. Because she dumped the cocaine, co picked up the Uzi. Like, this is what this nigga was saying in 85. Down south, we do crump music. Crump, 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 crump. Crump is about 160 BPMs. Heavy pounding 808. Get back, motherfucker. Get back. 
Get bucked, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Get bucked, motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> Take that and go to another level where you just start pushing and slam dancing and got them throwing bowls and got them just jumping up and down and just got them bouncing and shit. That's what crunk really means. You know how folk get when they get like this? They're good shit. Like 20 keys of uncooked crack. It's just raw. When they get really crunk on the music, you getting bumped. And if you get bumped, you finna bump another mother. And then when that happened, ape shit down here, you know what I mean? Right now, man, like Lil John, he is like, he is like the king of crunk. Like the way me and Lil John, Esau, well, me and Lil John, <laughs> with the May, the May, I'm just, nigga, I'm drunk. <laughs> nigga, it's five in the morning. <laughs> me, me, Lil John, and them, and them boys right here, Sam and Bo. The way we really got, you know what I'm saying, we wanted to start doing some other shit was because, like, it wasn't no, it wasn't no ATL records, really, that was just straight about getting crunk. Crunk is the type of music that the slaves, if they were around today, when they got tired of Massa, and they knew they couldn't go whoop Massa's ass, they go to the clearing and they go, oh, that's what crunk is. When Lil John go, yeah, when he says that, that's 400 years of oppression that he's releasing. <laughs> When I'm on that stage, I, it's strange. That's why I feel the most free. When you see crunk music in a club, it's like a revival. We doing this so we don't kill each other in the street. We get it all out in the club. Like that's what y'all don't understand. This is us. We in the fields, celebrating that big house burning down. We celebrating the end of this war because we it's over. You know what I mean? But if we force to hold it in, it's gonna get let loose on somebody. Bust this cut that's your brains when, when I spit this verse. And I'm a blood sucking vet by my venom is worse. Head bust a with danger with thirst. Head Shout your bone in your chest and make your motherfucking heart burst. The world now, Prince of the South, on the map. Knock your thoughts out and, and leave your brains in your lap. lap. Don't tell my cane go, shout it with wrong with you. I might cut my feet back and, and knock your grill loose. Madness on wax, man, is what I call it. I mean, you just want to get up and just do something rowdy, and that's a good way to relieve, you know, a lot of stress, you know. Because when I'm riding in my car and I'm having a jacked up day, man, a song like that can just kind of make me brush it all off and let me know that, okay, I'm still in charge. I'm, I still, I can handle this. I can do this. You don't got a crunk record, you can't get the fucking ATL club on the chain. I don't give a fuck if you got down. You got the number one album on Billboard, but if that shit ain't getting a nigga in the ATL crunk, nigga, you ain't gonna sell no record down here, bro. That beat dropped right there. It make niggas ball their fists up, you know what I'm saying, and bite their teeth. Like that pressure about to bust that pipe, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that crunk kind of the spiritual and the tribal effect and you know cause it has, you know what I'm saying, like on people, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, is that being like out of the loop for so long, you know what I mean? Like, and, and crunk trying to break through, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where that energy and that urgency come from. It's dance and it's happy and it's fun, but there's some sociological things that underline crunk that make crunk a lot deeper than what it is. Deep in the dirty, deadly south, I've seen the evil demons' crosses burn. As we give birth to a new breed that will someday make the tables turn. A brand new species of children that they can't figure out. Genetic memories subconsciously our children lashing out. 
My wife told me that our son was acting bad in school, beating up other little kids and violating rules. And then we realized the TV was programming our son. He watched that Power Rangers shit and now he think he won. In order to tell a lie, you got to know the truth of that which cannot be realized except by direct proof. My words are unrestricted proof to never disregard the convictions forced upon me when I know the truth. Don't compromise with the soul killers, the whitest darkness of the mind kidnappers and the evil blood spillers, deadly footprints in the shoes of this bloody nation, so you shall die by the hands of your own creation. You cannot deal with this music. You cannot deal with the South without dealing with certain topics. You're not gonna, South, most Southerners are gonna deal with poverty. The economic side for blacks always been, you know what I'm saying, we always got the, the worst of the worst. Barely making it, you know what I'm saying, barely surviving. And I feel like all that energy, uh, the op oppression and all that was always expressed through the music. If you making money like this, dog, we should see more, more schools out here for our kids to go to learn to if they want a decent education. You see what I'm saying? More safe houses or, or whatever, because I, I don't blame shit on the white man, but you got to admit that he got shit fucked up, fucked up for us. Man, we still some slaves. We still down here. We slaves. We the sons of the slaves. You understand? We got the, the ghost of, of, of hundreds of years of slavery, you know, sharecroppers, civil rights workers. And those ghosts and those spirits are floating around. And I believe as musicians, we're, we're taking something from those spirits that are floating around that are giving us the power to project ourselves and put our music out there. Um, and I think it's that passion that makes us just that much more um, aggressive with our music than, than other places. When the rap game came in, you know what I'm saying, I, I feel was always real t intense get buck, high energy, you know what I'm saying? Throwing elbows, getting wild because I think it was the, it's always be the, it's the frustration of being oppressed. And that's what influenced me, you know what I'm talking about? The struggle, the shit I done been through. <clears throat> I mean, I talk about my whole life story, you heard me? Will of God, I'ma be here to speak on it. Tulsa's history for black people, period, has been not one that, you know, anybody from Tulsa should be proud of. We had, uh, black district called Black Wall Street. 1921, it was burnt to the ground. Uh, more than 400 people was killed, and it was done by the city. You know, Tulsa Police Department was the same Tulsa Police Department it is then, that's running things then, that's running things now, and caused or helped protect a lot of the violence that went on. And we decided at one point in our lives, around the 60s, 50s, and 60s, we ain't taking it no more. So from Rosa Parks, who sat down on that bus and said, I ain't getting up, I don't give a damn what you do, come on and arrest me. To the deacons of defense in Alabama who said, if you shoot me, I'm shooting back. We made sure that we came here to let the Klan know, you kill all black cats, we'll knock off your goddamn white dog. This is the cradle of the civil rights movement. You're talking about people who grew up watching their grandmothers stand on the front line. My Luther King was killed here, you know what I'm saying? We known for that kind of bullshit, you know what I'm saying? My Luther King, you know what I'm saying, helping people, helping, you know, fighting for blacks all over the country, but get killed in Memphis, you know what I'm saying? It's a worldwide struggle and we die playing on hustle. It's a worldwide struggle from my block to your block. It's a worldwide struggle and we die playing on hustle. It's a worldwide struggle from my block to your block. Racism is alive and well here. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. I mean, we still flying the flag, you know. They get us to vote on a flag down here that represents, you know, what they love. Fuck the Confederate flag, burn that bitch. You feel me? Because my thing is, and I know a lot of people gonna get mad about it, but ain't no way you would have no um, um, swastikas flying around New York. Jewish people ain't gonna take that shit. It ain't going down like that. See, I know that there's a culture in the Confederate flag, but there's also negative connotations that go along with that. And when you have a group of people, Mississippi just ain't white people. It's black people too. Confederate flag ain't got shit to do with me, cuz. For 
people to embrace that, that means that they don't want to step into the future. It means they want to hold on to that because the whole Confederate system was built on the back of slavery and not really giving a fuck about my people. You still got judges. You still have prosecutors, cops who ride around with Confederate stickers on the back of their trucks. That's still going on to this day. But these are people that are supposed to uphold the law. And then you got your people who, uh, who say, well, I'm not like them, but yet you ain't doing nothing about it. So you are like them. You know, uh, a fella out here, homeless, you know, he's not gonna in, uh, run across any kind of uh, overt racism because he's in no position to do so. But if you take a businessman or, or a physician who has the credentials and the background for a particular position, of status in this community or at a hospital or something along those lines, then he is going to be, he's going to really catch that racial hell because that is something they really don't want. They don't mind if there's an angry homeless person, but they sure don't want an angry professional who's got money, clout, intelligence, and, and a demeanor about himself to be able to, to contend with them on, a, on equal footing. That is their worst fear, is an educated nigga. You have institutionalized racism now, whereas it's not prevalent as it was back in the 60s, you know what I'm saying? There's not people riding around with white sheets on, uh, burning crosses, you know what I'm saying? Not as much as they used to, let's just say it, put it like that. Uh, you know, and there's not people out there trying to stop blacks from registering to vote at the polls and, and voting. But you got people now who are in a suit and tie, who are in Fortune 500 companies, who are putting African Americans up against that glass ceiling where they can't advance. And they're not gonna say, hey, I'm a racist. You know, a la Trent Lott and the statements that he made. Um, they're not gonna come out and say, I'm a racist and I hate black people, but it's more under wraps and it's more hidden. Our parents have been brought up to hate black people. And inadvertently, they raise us to, to notice those differences right off the meter. And um, that's just something that we struggle against, that we have to fight against, because hatred is a very hard thing to overcome. I mean, it's in my family. Racism is in my family, period. In a way, I was raised to, to be that way, you know, but that's, I'm living proof that things are changing. When I grew up here as a little boy, this is where the Ku Klux Klan had all their rallies and marches. And to see like 20 years later, me, the first black owned business on Main Street, and I know that if it wasn't for that microphone, I wouldn't have never been here. Man, I know there's some blessings coming because I'm already living it. We in a whole new time than we was in the 60s and the 70s. You know what I'm saying? That's like, you know what I'm saying? Courtesy or like MTV, they just brought all the races together. You know what I'm saying? Me and Rico Way, me and Sleepy Brown, me and Timberland can get on TV. And, and you know and we we can hug each other and we love each other, but the fact is that's not how everybody feels, you know what I mean? But that <clears throat> that's why it's important that we set that example, because slowly, slowly, it's it, it's going to change. So I guess all of that goes into what we put into our music. <laughs> Bounce, 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 bounce. Uh -huh. Bounce started right here in New Orleans, you know what I'm saying? Very, very, very instrumental in, in um, the whole music scene as a whole. These guys, when they make their beats, there's so much goes into it. There's elements of jazz, there's elements of second line, there's elements of bounce, there's elements of hip hop, there's elements of soul. It's exotical, it's uh, Cajun or whatever you want to mix in there. All that is in the, what you call bounce, because bounce ain't nothing but chant. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing but like Chopper said, oh my independent woman, I don't, you know, I'm gonna give you a response. I'm gonna give you something to feedback. You know what I'm saying? We deal with the audience. Bounce deal with audience. <laughs> When you start thinking about bounce, I mean, it's party music, it's dance music. Shaking music, music you can shake off, dance off. 
is, is, is just a beat. It's like a drum cadence. Like, yeah, everybody else seen Drumline, well, just add Drumline with a hip hop track, you know what I'm saying? Up paced, tempo, you know what I'm saying? Where you can just, if you hit, you're gonna move. You can't help it, you're gonna move, you're gonna do your thing. Our shit is banging. <laughs> we know how to shake our ass. Watch your if that shit don't appeal to us until they put Trigger Man under that. Put that Trigger Man, that, that beat under there, and it's on now, here, man. DJ started playing the Trigger Man breaks back to back. Real, real good instrumental that they used. And that was like the cornerstone of bounce, you know what I'm saying? You cannot have a song if you don't put Trigger Man and Brown beat because they gotta have that same type beat pattern. They know that beat pattern, come on, when you first put it in the club, when that beat hit a certain way, they know. I call New Orleans the birthplace of bounce, but even before that, it was the birthplace of jazz. You hear the rhythm right here. You can, you know, everybody feeling it. Oh, this way, I play right here. In the clubs, bananas, you know what I'm saying? Crazy, man. Everybody bucking for their war. That nine war, that seven war. to the club, I love to see the girls on how they bounce that ass on that bounce music though, you know what I'm saying? They getting hot and sexy and shit. Next day, you know, they'll take off their shirt, titties showing, they bouncing and everything. So we need to bounce. <laughs> they made the girls bounce that ass. We don't like slow tempo, we like up tempo. We, you know, New Orleans really up tempo. Like 100, 110 like that. It was a club scene, it all sounded like a club scene. And niggas started, got tired of playing the same music over and over again. MCs wanted to rap. But niggas rapping, the niggas really come for a party. But most artists rap, they won't rap their whole life story. They won't tell you their problems and shit. But the niggas like, man, they don't hear that shit. So like T. Tucker came, when T. Tucker came around, and he started jumping on the fucking mic, he just spitting some party shit, rocking the fucking crowd. It wasn't about how much time he did, uh, how much bling he got, uh, how many whips he got or nothing. It was all about that real street hood shit. When T.T. Tucker was doing it, there was nobody else. He was the one who made the first big hit for New Orleans. Warren Mays was the second one. The second um, artist in New Orleans to get a major deal with that song, Get It Girl. Warren Mays had the little Get It Girl thing out, and women started doing a little pussy pop thing. Get it, 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 And that's really when the women started getting all the way out there with that dance. Yeah! Start booting up off of whatever, but the, the get a girl dance transformed into the pee pop. They came DJ Jimmy with where they at part two and all that stuff here, you know, a little, a little image of T.T. Tucker, you know, but his own little style mixed with it with a little rapping to it, you know, talking about almost the same thing. Then come everlasting hit man, you know, talking about bounce baby bounce, add a little reggae to it, you know what I'm saying? Put a little flavor to it, and then come myself, DJ Julie, King of Bounce. He know what it takes. He know what the girls want here. You know what I'm saying? He mainly do a lot of stuff for the girls. So if the girls pop off, the dudes automatically gonna go get the stuff so they can see the girls pop off. Jubilee made up a thousand certified dances, dawg. Th I'm trying to figure out how do you make a thousand dances? Making the girls back their ass up toward me, backing their thing up, you know, bending over. And I seen him on a video or the tape show where he called Every, I mean, he, he might not have called a thousand, but he called close to 500 of them, and they did all 500. So what I did, I took a little second line scene and put it in mind and made a song called Who That Call The Police and all this stuff here. I put a little second line, bass line with a little bounce track. Man, it was on fire. That's the bug wild letter, drop a dime, a flip of a hat. 
Second line go down real quick, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Saying brass bands like the Rebirth, Young Man Olympians, Big Footers, you know what I'm saying? Them the cats that did it, Downtown Hustlers, them the cats that did it, man. That was the name of some of the second line groups that really held it down in the city, you know what I'm saying? When you go to second line, man, in New Orleans, you going to a special event, man. <laughs> when you look at the second line, it's it's an old New Orleans tradition, man. You know, we second line, we dance in the street all out off of instruments and music and bass drums. <laughs> You know what I mean? We real down here, down here, man, and we like music. Yeah, we like the bounce. Cartier, like bling. Hard to say I ain't doing my thing. Eyes chinky like my last name, Wang. Mommy love me long time, cause I bring pain. Ferrari color sunshine, Jones the name, a zone of the king. Started pushing stones in the rain, now it's four and a half, saw a hole or a half. Drew of the crack, what? And any hood know where it's at. A real gangster gon' know from your dap like a GDs or VL. Leave fishy niggas to swim with seashells. News never come around to get the details. Shower my women with watches by eBay. He's so unique, won't catch him blowing dough on a freak. It was a fuck, so we never got to speak. My East Coast Connect got the powder to the leak. Rule one, how we keep our power on these streets. Crystal on the weed, common as a pistol up a sleeve. And you question why these bitches won't feed? Mm -hmm. Check out that music, man. Got that Bucket Loke album for sale. And got that 9 millimeter if you need it. Independent game, that's the way. That's the way. A lot of y'all think your boy fell off the map. No. I just got tired of making a dollar fifty cent per record when we selling millions of records for these folk and we could be making six, seven dollars a record. Record companies are like small plantations. You feel what I'm saying? It's got niggas working on the plantation. You feel what I'm saying? You got your house niggas and you got your field niggas. But you already know who getting the big bucket anyway. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I think independent is the best thing in the fucking world, man. Because in the long run, it pays off. You know, a lot of cats out here that, that wasn't independent, they, they find themselves starting back at square root eight again. I mean, I had to start at square root eight. So I know independent is the fucking way. Pastor Char went through it. See, a yin yang twin went through it. A whole lot of stuff. A lot of niggas. So independents have always been popping up when they see a vast body of music that is not being recorded. They're young and new and struggling and wanting to make money in this game, and they'll run in and fill that gap. And then the majors, of course, are sick. They'll try to come and take it over. Fucking majors is so fucked up now. You know what I'm saying? Because these motherfuckers is sitting up here behind the office. There's no such thing as all this development no more. They're trying to listen for the hottest shit that's on the radio, taking it, snatching it, and throw it out there. And then after they get it, they sign a fucking label, they sign a group, they sign an artist get their shit and put it back out where it is in the solo already, think it's gonna sell twice. Stupid motherfuckers. Bottom line, they never bought three fucking major accounts anyway. You know what I'm saying? Now it's in the system and the state right now. If you don't go gold, they drop on your asses. You need to be independent. Two years ago, they were spending $750,000 million for a video. Now they don't want to spend $125,000. Cause everything done changed. People burning CDs, people burning music. Not gonna, everybody not gonna come out the box selling a million, two million CDs. So what you gotta do is figure out how you gonna sell a half million CDs and make more money than the people that sell three million. And the independent game is that. We got an album that has sold 70,000 records, so you know what I'm saying? Why are we gonna try to sign with a major company who's just gonna give us a little upfront money and rape us from everything on the back end when we could just be independent and keep on doing this, you know what I'm saying? It's not like our fan base is gonna go away tomorrow. Every time we drop something, it's gonna do it's gonna do nothing less than fifty thousand out the trunk. That's how we do, you know what I'm saying? So on the good note, so on, so on your regular version you do one fifty. On your chop screw you do another fifty. So that's two hundred thousand units at eight dollars if we selling them wholesale. You know what I'm saying? If you just on the block ten dollars, round it off. How much money that is?
Uh, damn the two million. But I ain't had a damn fucking video. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I paid it out the pocket for the radio, but that's two million, you know what I'm saying? Shit, that's a bunch of fucking money, man. Open up your goddamn checkbook. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to get some of this independent cash I'm making. Open that motherfucker up and give me the pen. That's how it's going to go. I'm going to tell you how much I'm going to give you. You ain't going to tell me how much you're going to give me. I'm going to tell you how much percentage I'm going to give you. Because I'm already making money independently. I'm, I, right now, I'm making 100% of my motherfucking money. You control your shit. You make all the moves you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Nobody ain't telling you what you got to do or nothing. You going out there, you know, meeting and greeting with all the stores yourself, putting your product and getting a bigger cut and getting $8 a fucking CD, you know what I'm saying? That's lovely. I'm my own budget. I'm my own artist. I hook my own shit up. I do my own engineering. I make my own beats. So you gonna pay me for every one of them fucking names that I name, that I tell you that I do. That you gotta go hire some other motherfuckers to do. Do you wanna be rich or do you wanna be famous? If you wanna be rich, stay independent. If you wanna be famous, go to a major label. If everybody say fuck cocaine, I'm just gonna sell weed. You know, the cocaine will play it out. You have about 10 million motherfuckers that can't get cocaine because this was what everybody wanna sell weed. So one person come up and say, well fuck, I'm gonna sell cocaine. He always selling it. He gonna make all the money because you you know the game wide open to him. That's what happened with Pete. You know what I'm saying? Why Pete made all the money? You couldn't you can't get a gangster record without from nobody. Q when they doing gangster rap. He started it. You know what I'm saying? What about doing the butt Master P? You had Puffy with the shiny suits on and you can go with Master P, it was gangster. You like, I wanna hear some bout it bout it. I wanna hear some head busting, some gold teeth, some you went to Master P for it. He stayed independent and he took what he had and he sold it to the world. When he exploded and people realized the amount of money and power and influence that he had amassed independently, it showed the deep south that if P can do it and he can come from Calio Projects and if he can do it, I can do it. And suddenly you see record labels pop up all over the south. My man P, he started and selling his music in the trunk and actually made more money doing it that way. So the cash money. And now they start to understand that a CD is nothing but an eight ball cocaine or whatever, dog. You snort it, you like it, you come back. If you don't like it, all right, you leave it there. But I'm gonna come with another bomb. And when I come with that other bomb, you snort down. When you like that, I got you hooked now. And now you go out of town, you go, hey. Have you tried that shit? It's coke for your ear. You snort it with your ears. Have you tried that shit down? Man, is this motherfucker down there? When you go down there, make sure you pick up one of these shit. And they're like, oh, shit. They come down, now they get hooked. Now they leave. And the best promotion is word of mouth. Okay? And you're looking at the dope game. The dope game is word of mouth. It's not like they advertise that shit on TV. It's not on radio commercials. You feel me? But it's still heavy for what it is. And that's the rap game. I got enough money for a video. I got enough money uh, for, for flies and posters and all that shit. So it's like, you know, now you got to come with something else. So that changed the business because you can't come down here thinking we so happy to get a deal. We not so happy to get a deal. They might get a couple hundred thousand uh, million dollars up front, but after that, they ain't going to be no more. Now, if I can find me a couple of the chiefs that got their whole clique in order, there's some old Ted Lucas out right there. And that's what I'm looking for, where they can get the opportunity to run their company and be very successful. Because it ain't nothing, Def Jam doing the same thing. Because they call us and they give us all the fly talk, you know what I'm saying? We're going to do this for you, we're going to do this for you, we're going to do this for you. But at the end of the day, you got to realize they the ones that's benefiting completely off of that. Now you got to keep a white man trying to tell you what to do with your music that you created. And nobody want that. Stop, keep recording, record. Nah, what, you I guess he look what you do? What you do? I'm trying to sell my house. Check it out. I'm trying to sell the house. It's in the store. Hey. Witnesses. Right. They try to switch up, say, look, you know, don't be so country. Don't, you know, don't be just stuck in Atlanta or just stuck in Mississippi or New Orleans. And I see they do that because they don't understand the music. We're down here, they're up there. They don't understand our culture. They don't understand our music. They really don't respect our music at this point. If you ain't never ate barbecue pig feet, you know what I'm saying? Or just seeing a thick bitch and, and say she cornbread fed, you don't know nothing. Don't judge my music, you know what I'm saying? Because you don't know me and you don't know where we come from. 
You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm putting down. If you ain't never ate chitlins, don't judge their the music. And that real. <laughs> they want you to be a puppet, and they want you to be what they say be, to do this promotional, do this, do this, run you raggedy, make, spend all that money on the video, but in the end, they want to tack it back and get their money off. When, when you think you're finna get some money, they holler, you broke, what happened? Oh, you got to pay for this, you got to pay for this, you got to pay for this, 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 this. You got to pay the stylist, wardrobe, this, 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 up. Oh. And now you broke in zero. Fame without fortune is a backwards hustle. It's something else about being independent. I think you put more of yourself into what you're doing, you know, and and it's important to please people, because I don't want I don't want to reflect on myself bad, you know, and then I want anybody that do business with me to want to do business with me again. So being independent, it's a grind, you know what I'm saying? You waiting on them folks to do it at them big companies, you sitting on your ass getting lazy, you heard? The whole southern region, they support each other a lot, so we really don't just need that major deal. We can pretty much do it ourselves. I think the future of this industry, even big major labels, is going back to this grassroots. A lot of major chains, you know, the chains that come out here are pretty much set up in malls and stuff like that. So that leave the door wide open for mama and daddy to want to open up a record store, $7,000 worth of merchandise every week, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. I feel like I can sell more CDs at mom and pop stores because they're in the ghetto. I don't want to say. You don't want to know. Hey, I'm going to call you back. Uh, mom and pop stores, it's in like, it's in the ghetto. You know what I'm saying? The most of them be in the ghetto and they don't sound scan. There, it's a lot of independent moms and pop stores here that without them, we wouldn't be as big as what we is either. If, if there's a big demand on mom and pop for my record, I know I got a record. They're in the hood. I mean, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they're in the neighborhood where, where a lot of the hip hop people come from. The underground depends on the mom and pop stores, you know, because the major stores don't carry our music. They'll put your album up on the same display as a Mariah Carey. There are no politics, you know. They understand the streets and they understand where you're coming from. They understand the hoods and they understand what the people really want. You got a home here in my store at the Music Attic. You also got one like in Ike's Records here, Boss of the Bobs. Metro music, just a lot of local mom and pop stores that want, want these kids to succeed. You know, they want them to have the opportunity to see their product on the shelves. They go back and they tell their friends in the streets and schools, hey, go to the music at it, go to Ike's, go to Metro, Bob Suckler Bob's or whatnot. My music is in there. That makes them feel good, man, they, with no hassle. You know, we just tell them to do a consignment sheet. We keep up with the numbers and whatnot. And you know we, we, you know we take care of them as, as they sell. If you, if you know it, we got it. You feel what I'm saying? So, so therefore, no need to order. But you got family. You can, you can network. You know what I'm saying? They'll network with you. They'll make it. Let you make it happen, man. You can build a dream in the south, man. You can't, you can't do that nowhere else, man. It's another opportunity for, for us to generate money. You know what I'm saying? Hire other people, open up businesses, and do other things from music that was probably never there in the South. We didn't see too much of that, you know what I'm saying? Now you're seeing artists get it, and they doing things with it, you know what I'm saying? As, as, as for our time, man, that's what I think we gonna bring to the table as far as that soul, you know what I'm saying? We gonna show them how to put back. Other places might not have nowhere to put back. Plenty room in the South. I'm totally free, you know? I'm totally free. And, and you, you, you maneuver, you make better decisions when your head ain't cloudy, you know? When you ain't got the to do it another man's way all the time. L, step in here and let me show him how we do it. Oh, yeah, this is how we do it, baby. Look at this. See, this is my, this oh. my round here, you see what I'm saying? The mink, how you do it, he lay it down, you see what I'm saying? My man. dog, West Cali. Mink Cali's. head, baby, this is how we do it. Saying, and man, for the look, ladies, it's oh. gotta go down. You gotta, gotta have that beaver, beaver. Said, it's going down. <laughs> when I it's getting it, hot. Said, my niggas be like, well, damn, dog, give me something that's fresh. I'm like, you gotta see that pony skin, you know what I'm saying? That's real pony, baby. Real pony, you know what I'm saying? It's like that. We doing it down here like that, you know what I'm saying? You got to stay fresh, dressed like a million bucks at all times, you know what I'm saying? Pretty, 
is a city that's set from a way off. There's nothing sweeter to a country boy than a day off. My grandmama hollering, hold still if you gonna get sprayed off. Play for a spell, but it's dark, so you keep your ass on the porch. Reckon it's gonna rain today, that's what them old folks they say. Hit you right on somebody's tailgate if you're going that way. Don't run across my kitchen floor, I'm trying to bake this cake. Mailman got molasses in his ass, he's running two hours late. Fried apples and biscuits make us all rise and shine. Mama tripping on us, kicking up dust, cause she got clothes on the line. And if my uncle's eyes is shut, that mean his whiskey was good. Now on the real, what do they know about us boys from the woods? You know South niggas could do it like this, did you? Look at me. I like to see not just the country, but the world respect the sound and the lifestyle of the South. You know, don't look at it and say, oh, you know, it's just country bumpkin uh, territory. Uh, there's just a little phase that everyone's going through. No, it's, it's beyond a phase. In the last three, four years, we were responsible for over 250 million records sold. Nobody in New York, nobody in California did that. Nobody together did that. The South did that. It's a culture, you know what I'm saying? It's a culture. It's a culture we live. It's the way we live, you know what I'm saying? We live, breathe, sleep, eat. We make love to hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? The nigga just on that real hood shit. Nigga trying to bring it back to the streets. Nigga trying to get off that bling, that singing, that ass shaking. Nigga ain't, they ain't, they ain't like that for everybody out this bitch. Nigga's hurting through the cut. Fuck the rap. Fuck your video. Fuck your jewelry. You don't see a chain on me. And fuck your motherfucking jam, because I push a Malibu. They just picked the Z28 up. It's in the shop getting a new motor put in it. And I ain't even got a zoo. But I'm a rough rod. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't going to sell my soul for no bullshit like that, you know? If your shit ain't that fire, ain't that, that thorough shit, you ain't going to sell records and your ass ain't going to be here. Pop! Your ass is out of here. Pop! I just want to see it go on and everybody do good music and... And I ain't hating on nobody, let's just work, let's do it, and continue what you do, you know what I'm saying? I just, I think it's real important for the South to, to remember who we are. And no matter how successful our artists become, we don't forget that from Jump Street, we always said us. We always live by us. We always live this one eat, family eat. You know, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you know, when the black man in the South wakes up, that, you know, like, really essentially, I mean, if it's, like, it's, it's going to be on. And, you know, to, to kind of take that, what well, my philosophy is when Southerners wake up and we start taking pride in who we are, as Southern blacks and whites. There you go. It's coming together. You know what I'm saying? God willing. It's all, it's all going to go down. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's written. It's going down. Alabama is here, the whole dirty South is here, hip hop is here, forever, remember that. They can't stop this shit. I think it's the responsibility of everybody rapping from down here to show the world one more time that the stipulations and shit they put on us and the, and the, the boundaries they put on us, man, shit is like non-existence, man, because we some of the cold, coldest motherfuckers that spit. And the ghetto, the ghetto across the country, man, don't switch. My story ain't no different than the nigga's story in Cleveland or, or, or Chicago or fucking L.A. or New York or anywhere from the ghetto, man. I got the same story. In the African tradition, there's something called Sankofa, which means you go back to the past in order to go forward because to know where you're going to go in the future, you got to know where you've been. Yeah, if you can't feel that, then... You need to go listen to some pop or something, man. For real. Hey.
is dropping automatically for people to prepare to see my homicidal majesty while drastically coming gunning for tragedy carrying shotties and burying bodies below gravity walking lethal when you can't even equal the half of me cricket with a bullet and i put it where your bladder be formulate a strategy for the rest of this league while i'm dressed in fatigue my gun all over your buns like a sesame seed stop testing me please you better believe nigga who can slay street drugs aim deep slugs rush creep and i bust heat till your brain leak blood dog can serve a fiend damage a murder scene polluting shooting and Executing for dirty green. I got more choppers than waffles at Burger King. Rubbing, touching your hip bone. Never slipping, my finger itching is ready to grip chrome. I'm popping shots and I'm killing. Cocking, watching you chilling. Drop from the top of your ceiling. My Glock can stop you from living. Blood spilling on the front of your clothes, in front of your hose. I'ma snatch your tongue from under your nose. Then take all of the money you owe. Make you swallow a bomb till your stomach explode. Don't worry, I got everything under control. I'm gunning the tick or running your set or coming to fit. They come in the glit. I want the respect. Put one in your neck and one in your eye. Wondering why you fuck with this wonderful guy. Torturing and scorching just like the month of July. Now your mama should cry. Just take a peek. I come Make it weak, come in to take your jeep while people be safe asleep, stealing your plate to eat. Frequently stay with heat, acting tough, my gat can bust from Jackson Bluff to Basin Street. Now this is it, that critical wicked shit can get you addicted quick. I hit you from flitted pitch, kick it with a vicious click, who be keeping the swish lit. A sip of crisp, be flipping bricks, tearing up the club like we triple six. I get hotter than heaters and colder than freezers. I'm rolling with Jesus in the back of a beetle with nine millimeters and desert eagles. It's just to show this herb is illegal. Searching for evil and perfectly equal at murdering people. I'm verbally lethal. Busting bullets at your burgundy regal. Stuffing motherfuckers and dirty Adidas. You know what I'm saying? They gotta holler at me, man.